Hey guys, how are you? Today we're going to talk about MIPS. So MIPS is the Merit Based Incentive Payment System and it is one of two tracks of the Quality Payment Program. It was put into effect in January of 2017 and we are now coming up on the last week of the year. Um, so I just wanted to make a small mini series of videos to answer some frequently asked questions um, to help you report for 2017 as well as to help you prepare for 2018 and beyond. Um, so in this first video, I'm going to discuss who is eligible to participate in MIPS in 2017 as well as the uh, financial and reputational impacts that you will face from participation or non-participation in MIPS. So for 2017, here's who's eligible to participate. We've got our physicians, physician assistants, nurse practitioners, and clinical nurse specialists. Um, so there is a volume threshold and in order to be eligible to participate you have to see at least 100 Medicare Part B patients or bill at least $30,000 in Medicare Part B charges. Um, there are a few other exclusions so if you are a newly enrolled Medicare provider you don't have to participate in MIPS for 2017 you will not be penalized for it um, and then also if you are on the track to becoming part of an advanced alternative payment model Model, you also don't have to report for MIPS in 2017 um, or beyond most likely. Here's how MIPS is going to impact you if you're an eligible clinician. In 2017, if you are eligible to participate in MIPS but you do not report anything, you will face a 4% payment penalty in 2019. So this is going to be a 4% decrease to your Medicare reimbursement. There is something called the minimum participation track in 2017 and this track allows you to submit as little as just one quality measure and if you submit that much you are already going to avoid the 4% penalty in 2019. So if you're not sure if you are eligible to participate in MIPS in 2017, you need to go to www.qpp.cms.gov and you can put in your MPI and that's how you can find out if you're eligible or not. The financial incentives and penalties are going to be increasing every year. So for the year 2017, you're going to see the payment adjustment in the year 2019. If you don't report anything at all for 2017, your Medicare reimbursement will be decreased by 4% in 2019. Um, if you choose to participate more than just the minimum track, which is going to be partial participation where you are required to report on 90 days of data, or if you're going to be doing the full participation track, you're going to need to report on 12 months of data. And that's going to have a lot more measures that you need to meet than just the minimum participation track. If you do participate in 2017, either partially or fully, you can actually earn an increase to your Medicare reimbursement in 2019, but the increase is most likely not going to be as substantial as it will be in future years. So if you do choose to participate more than just the minimum track in 2017, which means that you are either participating partially and submitting 90 days of data, or you're participating fully for the whole year, which means that you would have started your participation efforts back in January of 2017. So if you do choose to pursue more than just the minimum track in 2017, you can earn payment increases in 2019. However, these payment increases are not going to be as substantial as they will be in years after 2017, and here's why. MIPS is a budget neutral program, which means that the payment increases that are given to the higher performing clinicians are actually taken away from the penalties imposed on the lower performing clinicians or the ones that aren't reporting at all. Um, so if everyone in 2017 is going to be using the minimum participation track to avoid the 4% penalty, there is not going to be too large of a pool to um, reward the higher performing clinicians from. So after 2017, the payment decreases or increases to your Medicare reimbursement are actually going to go up. So in 2018, if you do not report at all, you can face a penalty of up to 5%. 
So this means that in the year 2020, your Medicare reimbursement is going to be decreased by 5%. If, however, in the year 2018, you participate and you do great in this program, you can actually earn a increase of 5% to your Medicare reimbursement in 2020. On top of that, in 2018, there is also something called an exceptional performer bonus. There is an additional $500 million pool that has been set aside to reward exceptional performers. Exceptional performers are clinicians that earn a MIP score of 70 or above. And 70 points is very doable, especially considering the fact that 2018 is still going to be a transition year and there's still going to be a lot more leniency given towards clinicians. And there are going to be many other ways that you can earn bonus points in order to achieve higher scores. And we're going to discuss these options in a future video, but for now, I just wanted to recap that in 2017, you can face a payment penalty of 4%. In 2018, that's going to go to 5%. So either your Medicare reimbursement is decreasing by 5% or it's increasing by 5%. If in 2018 you meet the exceptional performer bonus, then that's another 10% up to another 10%. Um, in 2019, that percentage is going to go up to 7%. So now you can either earn a payment penalty of 7% or a payment increase of 7%. And then after that, in 2020, we're going to see a uh, payment increase or decrease of 9%, and that's actually where it's going to cap. So after 2020, that's going to stay at 9%. So either increase of 9% or decrease of 9%. So aside from the financial impact that MIPS is going to have on clinicians, it will also affect them in other ways as well. So first of all, your MIP score is going to be displayed on Medicare's Physician Compare website for everyone to see. So your existing patients can go on this website and see your MIP score. Uh, potential new patients who may be looking for a new clinician can access these MIP scores as well and they're going to see all the clinicians in their area and it's common sense that they would want to go to the one that has the higher quality score. So not only can your patient see your MIP score on the Medicare Physician Compare website, but so can insurance payers. Insurance payers are going to want to assign their patients to clinicians with higher MIP scores. It's common sense. Uh, they want to make sure that their patients are getting quality care. In the long run, it's going to reduce their own expenses because they know that the clinicians that they're assigning their patients to are going to be doing what they need to do to reduce healthcare expenditures, to prevent hospital admissions or ER visits that are unnecessary. So it makes sense for insurance payers to be swayed by a higher MIP score. Your MIP score can also decrease leverage if you are a clinician with a low MIP score that's looking to either obtain a new contract with an insurance payer or to maybe renegotiate the current contract that they have. So um, you just have to keep in mind that MIPs can affect your uh, reputation and credibility, which can also be just as damaging as the financial incentives or penalties that they can impose on you. So that's another way that a low MIP score can negatively impact your practice and not only decrease your Medicare reimbursement but also decrease your patient volume also costing you money one other thing to consider is that your MIP score follows you so this means that if you are a clinician and you're leaving the facility that you are at your MIP score is going to be coming with you so now if you're applying to a new job your employer can look up your MIP score and this can also affect their decision as far as hiring you or not so that's just another thing to consider um, when deciding whether or not to participate in MIPS Alright guys, thank you so much for watching. If you would like more information on MIPS, please go to www.lmsmips.com and you can download a free ebook that's going to have a lot more information and it's also going to have some useful links that you can go to if you want to do some additional research on your own. If you would like to hear me discuss any other topics in healthcare management, comment below and I'll do my best to answer your questions. Thank you.